All right, I'm going to take a second and just calibrate my voice here. I'm uh, usually a lecturer, which means I project. So, all right, so my name is Clarissa Littler, and I'm here to talk tonight about the theoretical limits of 3D printing, how it ties into fundamental questions in physics. But first, we're going to uh, start with Star Trek, right? Specifically replicators, because re replicators were those cool devices in next generation that could just take energy and make matter out of it. And you apparently could make just about anything you wanted if you had enough energy, even if a lot of times people just used it to make hot tea. Now, but, but, you know, the, the question I always had as a kid is, can we make something like this someday? Like, is this just pure science fiction or can we have it? And in reality, uh, we, we already have something that's kind of on the way and that's a 3D printer. Now, 3D printers are computer controlled devices that can make objects. And the important thing is that most of them are like this, they extrude plastic, but they're changing all the time. And the important thing here is they're computer controlled. They run a program to tell the machine how to build something. And this is an example of G-code, which is the programming language most of these things run. But the interesting thing is if they're running a program, then it means the limits of what they can describe are pretty much limited by what a computer can do in a program. And the thing is, a replicator being a hypertech quantum mechanical 3D printer, in order to do all of those cool things like making matter out of energy, you would need that to be possible to do, describe in a program. But the thing is, there's a lot of things you can't do with programs, right? Alan Turing was one of the first people who figured out there are fundamental limits to what computers can do, no matter what the techno, <clears throat> no matter what the technology, right? And we're not gonna focus on that, but we're gonna focus on some sort of rules of thumb to tell whether or not something can actually be done by a computer at all. And that involves, uh, it needs to take a finite amount of time, use a finite amount of data, and have a finite description, right? So a finite amount of time is probably sort of the most obvious one, because if it took an infinite amount of time, you wouldn't ever be able to finish it, right? <laughs> finite amount of data is actually kind of similar, but slightly more subtle in that there is only a finite amount of stuff in the universe. So if you need an infinite amount of data, you ha would have to put it in an infinite amount of space. That's not possible. And the final sort of important part is you need a finite number of steps to describe what the program does, or else it's not really a program, right? If you can't write it down and send it to other people and read it in in finite time and run it, then it's not a program, right? So you need a finite description. Now, where does this actually go wrong trying to build a replicator? Well, the question is, is the universe discrete or continuous? And discrete means things you can count, right? One, two, three, four, five, all your ducks in a row, right? And the important little detail is that counting these whole numbers, there's nothing between one and two, right? They're completely separate from each other. Continuous, on the other hand, is a little weirder, right? We can't allow like the real numbers where you can have infinite digits in the decimal expansion, like, like pi, right? And if you allow that, then you can't really separate out all these numbers because there's always something else in between them no matter how much you zoom in. And the problem with that is computers do really well with discrete data because you have these finite representations of it, but continuous things, you would require infinite amounts of data to actually store, say, all the digits of pi. That's really bad. But here's the cool part. A lot of the time, continuity is a lie. It's an illusion. Things can look continuous at big scales, but they suddenly become discrete, discrete on small scales. And the thing is, we don't know whether or not the universe is that way. The universe looks continuous. We based physics, a lot of our modern physics on that assumption. Calculus is based off that assumption, but we don't actually know if it's true. If I were to wave my hand, am I actually moving it through an infinite number of possible spaces, or is it more like a grid? Is it discrete? Because if there's actually only a finite number of positions in space-time from one point to another, then all of these quantum mechanical properties we need to describe, well, maybe they're actually finite data. And if that's true, then maybe one day we can actually have a device that runs some kind of almost quantum mechanical version of G-code that describes how to do things like flip up quarks into down quarks and vice versa through beta decay. And you know, can actually put together atoms and molecules and actually make whatever matter we want. And if we can do that, then surely we could make a real replicator and you know, do just about anything up to and including 3D printing galaxies themselves. So thank you. <laughs>